Hydropower or water power from Greek, water is power derived from the energy of falling water or fast running water, which may be harnessed for useful purposes. Since ancient times, hydropower from many kinds of watermills has been used as a renewable energy source for irrigation and the operation of various mechanical devices, such as grist mills, sawmills, textile mills, trip hammers, dock cranes, domestic lifts, and ore mills. A tromp, which produces compressed air from falling water, is sometimes used to power other machinery at a distance. In the late 19th century, hydropower became a source for generating electricity. Cragside in Northumberland was the first house powered by hydroelectricity in 1878, and the first commercial hydroelectric power plant was built at Niagara Falls in 1879. In 1881, street lamps in the city of Niagara Falls were powered by hydropower. Since the early 20th century, the term has been used almost exclusively in conjunction with the modern development of hydroelectric power. International institutions such as the World Bank view hydropower as a means for economic development without adding substantial amounts of carbon to the atmosphere but dams can have significant negative social and environmental impacts. History In India, water wheels and watermills were built, possibly as early as the 4th century BC, although records of that era are spotty at best. In the Roman Empire, water powered mills produced flour from grain, and were also used for sawing timber and stone. In China, watermills were widely used since the Han Dynasty. In China and the rest of the Far East, hydraulically operated pot wheel. Pumps raised water into crop or irrigation canals. The power of a wave of water released from a tank was used for extraction of metal ores in a method known as hushing. The method was first used at the Dolorkathy gold mines in Wales from 75 AD onwards, but had been developed in Spain at such mines as Las Medulas. Hushing was also widely used in Britain in the medieval and later periods to extract lead and tin ores. It later evolved into hydraulic mining when used during the California Gold Rush. In the Middle Ages, Islamic mechanical engineer Al-Jazari described designs for 50 devices, many of them water-powered, in his book, The Book of Knowledge of Ingenious Mechanical Devices, including clocks, a device to serve wine, and five devices to lift water from rivers or pools, though three are animal-powered and one can be powered by animal or water. These include an endless belt with jugs attached, a cow powered shadoof, and a reciprocating device with hinged valves. In 1753, French engineer Bernard Forrest de Bellador published Architecture Hydraulique, which described vertical and horizontal axis hydraulic machines. By the late 19th century, the electric generator was developed by a team led by project managers and prominent pioneers of renewable energy Jacob S. Gibbs and Brinsley Collarbird and could now be coupled with hydraulics. The growing demand for the Industrial Revolution would drive development as well. Hydraulic power networks used pipes to carry pressurized water and transmit mechanical power from the source to end users. The power source was normally a head of water, which could also be assisted by a pump. These were extensive in Victorian cities in the United Kingdom. A hydraulic power network was also developed in Geneva, Switzerland. The world-famous jet dough was originally designed as the over-pressure relief valve for the network. At the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in Britain, water was the main source of power for new inventions such as Richard Arkwright's water frame. Although the use of water power gave way to steam power in many of the larger mills and factories, it was still used during the 18th and 19th centuries for many smaller operations, such as driving the bellows in small blast furnaces e.g. the Dovey Furnace and grist mills, such as those built at St. Anthony Falls, which uses the 50-foot drop in the Mississippi River. 
In the 1830s, at the early peak in the U.S. Canal building, hydropower provided the energy to transport barge traffic up and down steep hills using inclined plane railroads. As railroads overtook canals for transportation, canal systems were modified and developed into hydropower systems. The history of Lowell, Massachusetts is a classic example of commercial development and industrialization, built upon the availability of water power. Technological advances had moved the open water wheel into an enclosed turbine or water motor. In 1848 James B. Francis, while working as head engineer of Lowell's Locks and Canals Company, improved on these designs to create a turbine with 90% efficiency. He applied scientific principles and testing methods to the problem of turbine design. His mathematical and graphical calculation methods allowed the confident design of high-efficiency turbines to exactly match a site's specific flow conditions. The Francis reaction turbine is still in wide use today. In the 1870s, deriving from uses in the California mining industry, Lester Allen Pelton developed the high-efficiency Pelton wheel impulse turbine, which utilized hydropower from the high head streams characteristic of the mountainous California interior. Calculating the amount of available power A hydropower resource can be evaluated by its available power. Power is a function of the hydraulic head and volumetric flow rate. The head is the energy per unit weight or unit mass of water. The static head is proportional to the difference in height through which the water falls. Dynamic head is related to the velocity of moving water. Each unit of water can do an amount of work equal to its weight times the head. The power available from falling water can be calculated from the flow rate and density of water, the height of fall, and the local acceleration due to gravity. W O U T equals Minus eta m g delta h equals minus eta rho v g delta h Display style dot W underscore out equals eta dot M G delta H equals eta rho dot V G delta H where W O U T Display style dot W underscore out workflow rate out is the useful power output in watts eta Display style eta. Eta is the efficiency of the turbine, dimensionless. M. Display style dot m. Is the mass flow rate in kilogram s per second. Rho. Display style rho. Rho is the density of water in kilograms per cubic meter. V. Display style dot v is the volumetric flow rate in cubic meters per second. G display style g is the acceleration due to gravity in meters per second per second. Delta h display style delta h delta h is the difference in height between the outlet and inlet in meters to illustrate the power output of a turbine that is 85% efficient with a flow rate of 80 cubic meters per second 2800 cubic feet per second and a head of 145 meters 480 feet is 97 megawatts w o u t equals 0 0.85 times 1000 kilogram m 3 
times eighty M three S times nine eighty one M S two times one hundred and forty five M equals ninety seven kilogram M two S three equals ninety seven MW Display style dot W underscore out equals zero point eight five times one thousand text kilogram text M carrot three times eighty text M carrot three text S times nine point eight one text M text S carrot two times one hundred and forty five text M equals ninety seven text kilogram text M carrot two text S carrot three equals ninety seven text MW Operators of hydroelectric stations will compare the total electrical energy produced with the theoretical potential energy of the water passing through the turbine to calculate efficiency. Procedures and definitions for calculation of efficiency are given in test codes such as ASME PTC 18 and IEC 60041. Field testing of turbines is used to validate the manufacturer's guaranteed efficiency. Detailed calculation of the efficiency of a hydropower turbine will account for the head lost due to flow friction in the power canal or penstock, rise in tail water level due to flow, the location of the station and effect of varying gravity, the temperature and barometric pressure of the air, the density of the water at ambient temperature, and the altitudes above sea level of the forebay and tailbay. For precise calculations, errors due to rounding and the number of significant digits of constants must be considered. Some hydropower systems, such as water wheels, can draw power from the flow of a body of water without necessarily changing its height. In this case, the available power is the kinetic energy of the flowing water. Overshot water wheels can efficiently capture both types of energy. The water flow in a stream can vary widely from season to season. Development of a hydropower site requires analysis of flow records, sometimes spanning decades, to assess the reliable annual energy supply. Dams and reservoirs provide a more dependable source of power by smoothing seasonal changes in water flow. However reservoirs have significant environmental impact, as does alteration of naturally occurring stream flow. The design of dams must also account for the worst case, probable maximum flood, that can be expected at the site. A spillway is often included to bypass flood flows around the dam. A computer model of the hydraulic basin and rainfall and snowfall records are used to predict the maximum flood. Use of hydropower Mechanical power Water mills Compressed air hydro where there is a plentiful head of water it can be made to generate compressed air directly without moving parts. In these designs, a falling column of water is purposely mixed with air bubbles generated through turbulence or a venturi pressure reducer at the high level intake. This is allowed to fall down a shaft into a subterranean, high roof chamber where the now compressed air separates from the water and becomes trapped. The height of the falling water column maintains compression of the air in the top of the chamber, while an outlet, submerged below the water level in the chamber allows water to flow back to the surface at a lower level than the intake. A separate outlet in the roof of the chamber supplies the compressed air. 
A facility on this principle was built on the Montreal River at Ragged Chutes near Cobalt, Ontario in 1910 and supplied 5,000 horsepower to nearby mines. <laughs> <laughs> Hydroelectricity Hydroelectricity is the application of hydropower to generate electricity. It is the primary use of hydropower today. Hydroelectric power plants can include a reservoir generally created by a dam to exploit the energy of falling water, or can use the kinetic energy of water as in run of the river hydroelectricity. Hydroelectric plants can vary in size from small community-sized plants micro -hydro to very large plants supplying power to a whole country. As of 2019, the five largest power stations in the world are conventional hydroelectric power stations with dams. Hydroelectricity can also be used to store energy in the form of potential energy between two reservoirs at different heights with pumped storage hydroelectricity. Water is pumped uphill into reservoirs during periods of low demand to be released for generation when demand is high or system generation is low. Other forms of electricity generation with hydropower include tidal stream generators using energy from tidal power generated from oceans, rivers, and human-made canal systems to generating electricity. See also Notes <laughs> <laughs>